Hi everybody, in today's video, I will cover the following. What is Form DS-160? DS-160 and Consular Processing Tips, how to fill out the different parts of the form, associated fees, J2 dependent issues, and additional information. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not done so already. I have a video about the J1 visa interview process on my channel, so definitely watch that as well after this video. I would also appreciate you leaving comments and hitting the like button. I also have a Facebook channel where you can follow me and participate during my Facebook Live if you have any questions that you'd like me to answer right away. You can also DM me on that page. Okay, so what is Form DS-160? Form DS-160, also called the Online Non-Immigrant Visa Application, is an online form used to apply for temporary U.S. visas, including the tourist visas, J-1 and J-2 visas, and also for K or fiancé visas. The electronic form collects personal, educational, professional, and other information such as your passport number. The DS-160 form is an essential part of the visa application process because it provides the U.S. Department of State with the necessary information to determine whether or not an applicant is eligible for a non immigrant visa. It's important that this is completed correctly. Form DS-160 must be filled in and filed online on the Consular Electronic Application Center or CEAC website. CEAC is a Department of State online application center where applicants can submit forms, fees, and documents. There is no paper version of Form DS-160. You can view a sample Form DS-160 to help you prepare, but you must still complete the online version. DS-160 and Consular Processing Tips When you are completing the DS-160 online and preparing to apply for J visa, here are some helpful tips. Give yourself at least three to four hours to fill out the DS-160 online. Save your application every five minutes as you complete it so the internet doesn't time out. You can save your progress as you complete Form DS-160 and return to it later as long as you complete the process within 30 days. You can also save your DS-160 to your computer's hard drive and upload it again when you're ready to continue. Second, give yourself at least two hours to prepare a digital photo according to the consulate's specifications. If the photo is a bad upload, it will be sent away from the consulate until you return with a proper one. Remember, you will need a regular hard passport photo at your interview, not just a digital one from your DS-160 application. Print the DS-160 answers before you submit the DS-160 application because once you hit submit, it prints a confirmation page and nothing else. You will need a copy for your record and your visa sponsors. Your visa sponsor should give you an instruction on how to furnish them with a copy. Fourth, when you submit the DS-160 online, a confirmation page will be generated. If your visa sponsor is EPI, then you will upload this DS-160 confirmation page to your application under other documents. Fifth, email your visa sponsor once you have scheduled your consular appointment with the date of the appointment. All right, so this is how to get started. To fill out form DS-160, you will begin by choosing the location where you're applying for your visa. Don't worry too much about this. If you have to travel unexpectedly while your application is pending, you'll be able to schedule your interview at whatever embassy or consulate is most convenient, even if it's in location other than the one you first chose. On the next page, you will see your application ID. You will also be asked to provide the answer to a security question. Write this down and keep them safe together. They will let you access your application again later. You can also find your application ID on the top right corner of each page of the DS-160. If you forget your application ID, you can retrieve it online using your security question. Remember that your saved form DS-160 will only remain available for 30 days. If you need more time, you can download your DS-160 to your computer and apply it again later. Now let's go through Form DS-160 section by section. Part 1 is about personal information. Other names used. If a married woman, maiden name, please list your maiden name, married name, and any aliases or other names. This is very important for background check purposes. 
A marital status of single means that you have never been married. If you have been divorced, please indicate divorced in your status. Even divorced individuals must provide information on the DS-160 regarding the ex-spouses. If you are only legally separated, you must still indicate married and provide your soon-to-be ex-spouses information on the DS-160. Contact numbers are essential should the U.S. Embassy need to contact you. Use phone numbers where people can can actually call you. If you lie or purposely omit information on your visa application, it is a cause for termination of your J-1 program and it can also prevent you from all future visas. Part 2. Travel Information Purpose of your trip? You put in Exchange Visitor J. Specify? You put in Exchange Visitor J-1. Intended Length of Stay? 3 Years address where you will stay in the US. So in here you will put in the address of your visa sponsor. The visa sponsor will change this in the service system once you have a local address in the US. For person entity paying for your trip, put in self. For the question, have you made specific travel arrangements? You can say no. Part three is travel companions. Here you will fill in the details of anyone traveling with you. This might include family, friends, or members of an organized tour group. You don't need to include work colleagues traveling with you. Either way, remember that everyone who travels still needs their own Form DS-160. Part 4. Previous U.S. Travel Next, you will be asked if you have ever visited the United States before. If you have, you'll need to provide dates and details. You'll also need to indicate if you've ever been denied a U.S. visa or if you've ever filed an immigrant petition with U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services or USCIS. Part 5, Address and Phone Number. This section is straightforward. Simply enter your current address, phone number, and email address. You can enter an alternate mailing address if you wish. You will also be asked to list all the social media accounts you've used over the five years. You don't need to provide passwords, but you should list all the handles or user IDs you've used on sites like Twitter and Facebook. This is a recent addition to the DS-160 with USCIS officials now required to check your social media activity while reviewing your application. Part 6. Passport Information On this page, you will be asked for your passport information. You may be asked for a passport book number, sometimes also called an inventory card. Not all passports have this number, so if your country doesn't use them, just check does not apply. You will also be asked if you have ever had a passport lost or stolen. If you have, you'll have to supply further details. Part 7 is U.S. Contact Information. Contact person name in the U.S. This is someone from your visa sponsor, usually their legal representative. Organization name in the U.S. is the name of your visa sponsor, example, TPG, EPI, FACES, etc. Relationship to you, other, that's your program sponsor. U.S. contact address, you will put in the address of your visa sponsor. For phone number, same thing, it's the phone number of your visa sponsor. And email address, put in, does not apply. Part 8, relatives. Next, you will provide basic details about your father and mother. You may also be asked to provide details of any family members currently in the United States. If you are married, you will also be asked for your spouse's name, date of birth, nationality, and home address. Part 9, Work, Education, and Training Information. In this section, you will fill in the details about your occupation, educational background, and employment history going back 5 years. You will also be asked for your travel history and for details about any special skills you possess or any military groups, charities, or professional organizations of which you have been a member. Present employer, this is your home country school, not your future U.S. school. Monthly salary applies if you are employed. Don't be thrown off by the mention of local currency. You list gross, that's pre-tax salary, not net salary. Some information on student exchange visa. Civis ID, it will be emailed by your visa sponsor to you. Program number, your visa sponsor should also email this information to you. And then the answer to the question, do you intend to study in the U.S.? The answer is no. Although you are allowed to take classes part-time, the focus of your program is not study. Even though you answered no to this question, the form will later say you have indicated you may study in the U.S. Please provide two contacts. This is correct and yes, you should provide two contacts. It is because your program is not a work visa 
but rather involves learning, professional development, and teaching in a teacher position. Part 10, security and background information. Here you will answer yes or no to 25 questions on security and background issues. Make sure you read these questions carefully and take care on answering, as mistakes here could adversely affect your application. Part 11, applicant photo. You will need to upload a photo of yourself that conforms to U.S. Department of State guidelines. Once you've uploaded a photo, you'll be able to adjust the size and crop the image to make sure if it fits the requirements. The photo you submit when you file your DS-160 isn't a substitute for the passport style photo required for many visa applications. You will still need to bring a printed photograph to your visa interview. Part 12, review, confirm location, sign, and submit. You're almost done. You will now be asked to review the entire form. This is the last opportunity to check whether your answers are accurate. You will then be asked to confirm the location from which you're applying so that your application can be sent to the appropriate U.S. Embassy or Consulate. Finally, you will be asked to read some terms and conditions and then submit the form. After submitting the form, you will click next. To access your official confirmation page, you must print the confirmation page and present it to consular officials at the time of your interview. So what happens next? After filing form DS-160, you will need to print the confirmation page. This will be required when you interview at the U.S. Embassy or Consulate. If you forgot to print your confirmation page when you first filled out DS-160, you can log in again using application ID and security questions in order to print it out. Your Form DS-160 will then be sent to the appropriate embassy or consulate for processing. You should check with your local embassy or consulate for information about how to schedule a visa interview. When you attend your interview, you'll need to bring your DS-160 confirmation page with you along with other forms or documents required for your specific visa. You can check the status of your DS-160 application at any time by visiting the U.S. Department of State website. Paying your one 60 visa application fee. The consulate has specific instructions that you need to follow for paying the $160 visa application fee. You must pay the non-refundable $160 visa application fee to receive an appointment for a non-immigrant visa interview you will need to bring the $160 receipt with you to your consular appointment. The $350 service fee. Some business sponsors like EPI will pay for this and they will email you a receipt. It is referred to as the Civis I-901 fee. Your visa sponsor should give you instructions on this whether you will pay for it or they will. Day 2 dependents, you must complete a DS-160 online for each spouse or child accompanying you in J2 status. Each spouse or child who his J2 status also will need a DS-2019 form. If you're completing multiple DS-160s for your family, you can create a family application that will automatically fill in some details for each family member. To do this, first complete one DS-160. On the thank you page that follows the confirmation page, you'll see an option to create a family application. Remember, while well, this will automatically complete some parts of the DS-160 for each family member, everyone still needs their own individual DS-160. The $350 service fee paid for your J-1 covers the J-2 family as well, but each family member must pay the one $160 visa application fee. If your visa sponsor is EPI, when you do the DS-160 for each family member, upload the DS-160 form prior to submission, it can be printed, and the DS-160 confirmation page to the EPI website under other documents. Ask your visa sponsor if you will do this as well. I do not know how they do this process. I have these videos as well on my channel and I hope they will help you with matters relating to your J-2 dependent if you're planning to take your spouse or kids to the U.S. After submitting your DS-160, you are ready to book your visa appointment. Remember, within one or two days of getting your service number, you need to book your visa appointment. Email your visa sponsor as soon as you book your appointment date. Don't wait to book the visa appointment. If you don't book within one to two days, there will be problems with getting an appointment. The consular visa appointments will fill up very fast and there is no time to lose. I hope today's video helped you in some ways. I'll see you in my next one. Bye!